from the corner of Munson and Civic Center Boulevard, welcome Fanatics to Manor Ice Arena for game number 29 of your Manor Ice Breakers season. Tonight, the Icebreakers host in the Danville Dashers. I'm Angelo Vallada, and thank you for listening right here on YouTube.com, your home and away home for all Menor Icebreakers games. I'm joined alongside communications manager and color commentary Jared Tennant as we're finally back home, Jared, and we'll be here for most of the next upcoming days. Yeah, I'm sure the Icebreakers are happy to see home ice again after a tough series down in Carolina. Battled hard, but only got 1.2 games against the Thunderbirds. Yeah, it was on Friday, January 10th, a week ago. The Icebreakers lost in a great game at the Fairgrounds Annex, falling 3-2 in a shootout to the Thunderbirds. Declan Conway added his 26th goal score of the year. Dimitri Daniel scored his first goal of the season. And Stephen Fowler chipped in two assists while Nate Farrington had one. The Icebreakers fell short in the shootout, still yet to score in over three tries over two years. Then on Saturday, January 11th, the Thunderbirds shut out Menor 3-0 in former Rumblebees goalie Jake Mullins' debut for Carolina. On Thursday, January 16th, here's where things get interesting. That was just yesterday. Both the Danville Dashers and Menor Icebreakers had their goaltenders called up to the SPHL. Gordachuk was called up to the Birmingham Bulls, while Austin Rodebush was called up to the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. And Rodebush became the fourth icebreaker to be called up to the Southern Professional Hockey League, where we have John Butita, former icebreaker in Kent State Golden Flash right now, currently has three assists over five games for the Quad City Storm, and Drake Hunter from last year has one assist over seven games for the Peoria Rivermen in the 10-team SPHL. But, Jared, it wasn't just Gordachuk, it wasn't just Rodebush, it was goalie madness here in the FPHL here to end the week. Yeah, tons of teams having to make moves after they get their goaltenders called up. Of course, Nick Nieder going up to the ECHL for a game. Yes, and uh, Watertown also, goalie called up. It, it was crazy. You know, you think Gordachuk had a tremendous performance against the Icebreakers last time. You think, oh, hey, maybe we don't have to face him this time. Although Harley White, a talented goalie as well. And then Austin Rodebush called up right after that to uh, the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. So congratulations to Austin, the workhorse in the FPHL who has logged the most minutes in between the pipes of a goalie into the middle of January so far. So good luck to Rodebush up in North Carolina, or I guess down in North Carolina. But tonight we have a different goalie match. It'll be Harley White and Jordan Brandt and the Dashers sign former backup icebreaker goalie, Braddock Odden. Yeah, and looking at White, his first start in this building was not very good. He allowed seven goals. It was a 7-4 to four icebreakers win back on November 17th. But since then... He hasn't seen a ton of ice, but he's dominated when he has played. He shut out the Icebreakers on New Year's Eve, 23 saves in Danville. Stopped 47-48 of 48 in a 2-1 loss against Columbus. And On the year, he has a sub-3.0 goals against average and a 9-10 save percentage. And this could be his opportunity to show he's one of the top goalies in this league. Before we uh, get set for the starting lineups brought to you by Ganley Automotive, we want to tell you tonight is Educators Night here at Menor Ice Arena. We recognize the vital role you play in teaching and preparing our children for a successful future, and thank you for your dedication. And the first 250 educators in the door today are going to get a free T-shirt, so a great opportunity. We'll tell you about some other promos coming up over the next couple of days, and there's post-game skate today, one of five remaining times. We're going to take a look out at those lineups and Jared's going to start us off with the visiting Dashers. On left wing for, the, for Danville is Tyler Quintos. Right wing, Jesse Naher. And centering that line is Mitch Atkins, a former Elmira enforcer. Left defenseman, Alex Palmerville. And on the right side, Ben Buchel. And in between the pipes tonight for the Dashers is Harley White. For the men are icebreakers, led by left defenseman number 19, Brody Duncan from Toledo, Ohio. Right defenseman, Henry Berger. Centering that line is Blake Nada from here in Brooklyn, Ohio. Left wing, Thomas Stewart Dant, the veteran. And at right wing, first start here, and the 61st guy to take the ice in double blue for the Icebreakers, making his home debut, former Port here on Prowler, number 24, Haytham Oaid, at right wing, and in between the pipes, it'll be Jordan Brandt, who comes in at two and two, the righty from Alberta, Canada. That's your starting lineups here at Menor Ice Arena, sponsored by Gainley Village, providing everything from financing to auto service and parts. They are the dealership experience you've been waiting for as we get set for the national anthem. 
that will be sung by Megan Bretz here. We will uh, step away momentarily in a moment as the teams will take to the ice for the introductions and we'll be back for the national anthem. But Jared, as we look at the uh, standings before we cut away, the icebreakers at 13-13-0-2. Clearly not out of the running. Would make the playoffs today, but looking to maybe gain some momentum here into the second half of the season. Yeah, at the end of the day, you can't win games without scoring goals. That's been their biggest issue as of late. At one point in November, they had the top offense in the league. But since then, things have kind of fallen apart. In their last seven games, they have nine goals. They were shut out three times during that span. It's been ugly offensively, but they're going to have to try to get things going here tonight or else they're going to have a tough time beating these dashers. One thing to watch, Menner comes in now with the seventh most scored scold at 99 ahead of Battle Creek and Delaware. But being there, we are only one goal away from knocking down the 100th goal of the season. Last season it was uh, Vaughn Kloss is scoring the 100th uh, icebreaker goal in franchise history in the 11-7 Mania game against Port Huron uh, on that Sunday afternoon. But looking for goal number 100 and then 101 and more to come here at Menor Ice Arena. We'll be with you tonight. 6.30 start tomorrow night. The Dashers back in town for the last time, barring a meetup in the Commissioner's Cup Finals. And then... For the first time ever in franchise history, a Monday afternoon matinee on Martin Luther King Day as the Battle Creek Rumble Bees come to town. We're going to step away as the team introductions are going to uh, be taking place here at Menor Ice Arena. And we thank you for joining us. And we'll be back with the national anthem. So keep it right here on YouTube.com, your home and away home for all Menor Icebreakers games.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you please rise and join the players, coaches, and staff in removing your caps as Megan Bretz honors the United States of America, those who are serving, and those who have served with the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see Welcome back here to Menorice Arena. Great job on the National Anthem there by Megan Bretz as we get set for puck drop here. Finally back home at Menorice Arena, the Dashers here for the final two times of the regular season as a uh, special puck drop from Carrie Higgins, one of the educators being honored here tonight, a preschool educator. As we get set, want to give a big happy birthday shout out to my mom, Mary. Happy 60th birthday, mom if you're listening at home and uh, hope you're having a good day and a good weekend celebrating. And the Fanatics here are gonna look for something, Jared, to celebrate as uh, three of the next four days, we have the Dashers and the Rumblebees in town and the Icebreakers at 13-13, 0-2. Now is the time to pick up some wins. And this is a beatable Dashers team. It's gonna be a tough game, absolutely. Dashers actually have a better record than the Icebreakers this season, but the Icebreakers need this win right now. They've had every chance to catch up to Watertown in the East Division standings, but they haven't been able to do it up to this point. The Dashers hold a 3-2-1-0 record this season against the Icebreakers. Last year, the two teams were 4-4-1-2 against each other and the 11-game season series. The Dashers are in their road white jerseys with orange and black trim and black numbers. They will move left to right on this Friday night at Menor Ice Arena, and the Icebreakers in their double blue, dark blue with light blue and white trim and white numbers will move right to left, and we are underway for Menor Ice Arena. Mitch Atkins, former Elmira enforcer, tries to make his way through traffic down into the defensive zone of the Icebreakers. Dasher's trying to keep that puck down there here early. We know how important it has been for Menor to score first in their look for success here in the 2019-2020 season thus far. Now the Dashers will flip it past the neutral zone and down to Jordan Brandt, who will get the start now with Austin Rodebush called up to Roanoke in the Southern Professional Hockey League. Jordan Brandt is two and two, and he has a 298 goals allowed and a 902 save percentage. And having played just over 262 minutes for the Icebreakers this year, once again, congratulations to Austin Rodebush on his call up to the SPHL, fourth icebreaker to be called up in the two years of icebreaker hockey history. Now, they cross through the neutral zone, do the guys a double blue, Conway winds up and sends one hard off of the back glass. Declan Conway leading the team and league with 26 goals scored. Now Farrington, who had a good point streak coming in before the shootout, set that one up and a, a good rebound there by Conway goes Hard off the back glass, here come the Dashers into the neutral zone and Fred Hine, who's had great success here at Menor Ice Arena in the one and a half years of playing here, he would like nothing more than to pick up his 20th goal of the season for the Dashers. Yeah, and looking at Fred Hine, he's got 11 points in six games against the Icebreakers this year. That leads all players in the season series. Now it's Tim Perks trying to make something happen down in the Dashers zone, but Levi Armstrong will feed it forward to the left 
Work it over, circle now, looks to get it to the slot, and that pass a little bit behind his man. And Levi Armstrong will chase it down, the Urbana, Illinois native. Now back into Dasher's defensive zone, trying to get that puck up to Gullo. Gullo, stick clashes there with Mark Ezrews returning from his suspension. Good to see him back out on the home ice. And a whistle on the ice now at 18.04 remaining here in the first period of play. You know, looking at Jordan Brandt, I saw him pregame, and he's listed at 6'4", 205. I didn't realize exactly how big he is. He looks every bit as big as that 6'4", 205. And that is helpful. Uh, a very similar frame to Austin Rodebush was, was a giant back there in the pipes as well. Dashers again coming into tonight at 15-10, 1-1, good for 49 points. Menner. 13-13, 0-2 at 41 points in this Eastern-Western Division matchup. They'll play tomorrow night as well, and that'll do it unless they meet in the finals later this year. Now Tim Perks crosses the blue line, looking to get it to Stephen Fowler, and after Fowler returning from injury, it'd be great to get him going into a uh, higher category. He's done okay since returning, but he was such a, a proficient score for them so far in 13 games, a 2-8-10 scoring line for the Icebreakers. Mitch Atkins will get that one up along the far boards. And now Hawgood centers that pass, but it's stolen by Henry Berger, the Claremont, California native. Nahur trying to get it to Browson. Now back to Pinkowski. Pinkowski, that one goes deflecting off the stick of Hawgood, and Hawgood will clear that one out. He's got Fred Hine. Hine from the circle, winds up and puts it in the right corner. What a beautiful feed from Hawgood to Hine, and that puts the Dashers up 1-0 at 1703 here in the first period. Yeah, for Hine, that's his fifth goal of the season against the Icebreakers. I believe it's his third in this building, but just caught the Icebreakers defense sleeping that time. Brody Duncan wasn't able to get back in time to prevent that breakaway. Hawgood on the long assist, and Jared, you don't want to leave the team leading scorer, Fred Hine, that wide open, and he picks up his 20th goal of the season as he finds the top right corner there. And we have talked about this earlier. Menor has struggled when giving up that first goal. Not that they've never won, but it has not gone their way more often when they don't score first. So Fred Hine now with a 20-16-36 score line. Mitch Adkins also credited on the assist for the Dashers. And Hine was just hanging out there at the blue line. And uh, he knew where to go, and Hallgood put it right in front of him, sent a beautiful leading pass for Hallgood, number 68 for the Dashers. He picks up a pivotal assist there. And uh, normally he was under 44 on our roster as well. It actually is his uh, first assist credited to him on the air, and does a good job at picking that one up. So 16-33 remaining here in the first period. Well, a face-off right defensive circle. Tim Perks on the draw. Duncan now in the neutral zone. will send that pass over to Alfonso Diaz. The Pembroke Pines Florida native. Works it up to Esri, who tries to keep it down here in the defensive zone of the Dashers. Good job by Esri for check it down here. But it, they'll get it to Jesse Nayer into the neutral zone. And now... Right to left to Tyler Quintos as the Dashers on the change. Icebreakers, nice stick handle there by Brody Duncan, but taken down by Gullo. He'll have to dump that one down. 15-57 now in the first period. Wind up there from Stephen Fowler, and that'll draw a whistle. Now these two teams are two of the best defensive teams in the FPHL up to this point. They've been almost identical in terms of goals allowed per game. Icebreakers are second in the league at 2.89. Dashers are right on their tail at 2.93. Then both those teams trail Carolina, which has given up less than two goals a night. We'll have a face-off left defensive circle momentarily. I want to thank a few of our sponsors. Marcos Pizza, Kemp LLC, Conway Land Title, Toe Drag Apparel, CSP Insurance, Wingate by Wyndham Hotel. We'll tell you more. Stuart Dant trying to get that puck around from Zelak. And finally, the puck is freed out. Now behind the Dashers net where... It is Harley White, who's 4-2, 0-1 on the year, with a 2.99 goals allowed and a 9-10 save percentage in just over 440 minutes in between the pipes for the Dashers. 
as Jared talked about, has steadily improved. Now Levi Armstrong trying to cross right circle. He's challenged by Diaz. Zelak will work it back neutral zone, right to left. Trying to get that pass over to Troy Murray. But now the icebreakers have a chance from the right circle. Wind up, and the save, but now it squirts through. Holly <laughs> White didn't get a good handle on it, and the icebreakers tie this one up at one. Yeah, it's really good to see Blake Nada getting his first goal of the season. First goal is an icebreaker. Just got a little bit lucky that time. He took a, had a good look at the net, fired a pretty hard shot, but it just trickled through White, who probably should have made that save. So Blake Nada from the right circle gets it to go in. Congratulations on his first goal as an icebreaker, the Brooklyn, Ohio native. He got the start tonight. And uh, he's been close in the last couple of home appearances. But how big is that for Coach Ian Duncan's squad? They give up that early goal, which has been so pivotal against them. But they capitalize two minutes later. And of course, the last time these two teams played, there was only three goals in the entire game. We've got two in the first five minutes of this one. Well, we also have two guys, two totally different goalies. Not, not to take anything away from Jordan Brand or Harley White, but if you remember that, that game on a... Was it Sunday afternoon? It was tremendous. Gordachuk and Rodebush just going toe to toe. Came, came, came down to the last shot in the shootout, and Danville only put one in. Uh, AJ Tessarero got the win, and Menner could not put one in yet in their shootout. Morrill tries to get one off the edge of his stick. The Westerville Ohio native, and we've talked before, great international flair in the Icebreakers and throughout the FPHL, but some very talented players from right here in Northeast Ohio. Now, kind of stuck there in this corner. Finally freed from behind the net. And Artem Efimov Barakov, the Russian native, will free it. Gets it over to Bukel. Crosses the blue line, winds up, and that one deflects off of the pads of Jordan Brandt. That was dangerous as he was able to recover his own shot. And uh, now we have. An icebreaker leaning over. That is Yuri Pestuka, one of the newest guys to take to the ice as he's holding, uh, clutching his stomach there. If he's all right there, he'll be attended by the Lake Health Athletic Trainers. And that's gonna send the icebreakers to the power play. Looks like it's Ben Bugle headed to the box for the Danville Dashers. So the icebreakers go on the Lake Health power play and we wanna thank Chris Lewis, Rashawn Bailey, Cassie Mann and Malia Harwood, as well as Lake Health for providing medical staff for tonight's game and throughout the season. Also want to thank Market Street Family Restaurant, Global Real Estate Advisors, Spuddy's Tavern, and Vitamix. When this icebreaker's power play has just not been good, there's no other way to put it. They're only at 15.1% on the year. They're out of only barely over Columbus and Battle Creek. So a three on two advantage here. The feed to Perks and the net was pulled open. Now the long shot from Berger. And that one bounces high into the air over the net. 13.30 remaining here in the first period. And the icebreakers on the Lake Health power play for the next minute 32. Working this one in the defensive zone. Duncan feeds it up to Fowler. Good defensive stance there by Tyler Quintos. Duncan catches it at his own blue line though. Feeds it over to Perks. Perks trying to keep it down here in the defensive zone. Works it to the slot, but couldn't quite get it to Pinkowski. And now the icebreakers back in their own defensive zone, feeling the forecheck of Mitch Atkins. Already with an assist tonight. Now Gullo at, in the neutral zone will dump that one back. 55 seconds left here in the Lake Health power play. First of the evening, 1-1 is the score. Dasher scored first, Blake Nada Ties it up on his first goal in the FPHL. 41 seconds left in the power play. Duncan winds up and a nice glove save there. The left glove save made by Harley White, the lefty from Quebec, Canada. Looking reminiscent of a lot of those power plays in Carolina last weekend. They just cannot establish themselves in the offensive zone. They had maybe one or two good looks at the net. Now, good forechecking in there, but they're able to get it to Murray and a whistle on the ice at 12.14 remaining in 18 seconds only on the power play clock. Five, three, five, 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 
Also want to thank Homelight and online real estate company, Lake Erie Marine Sales, Mosaic Properties, LLC, Stadium Grill, Preston Products, LLC, Bethlehem Christmas Lights Park, Kana Winery, Habco Tool and Development, and McGarry and Sons draw here in the neutral zone. Mark Esri spins it around to Dimitri Danik, who was one of the lone scorers last weekend in Carolina. Picked up his first goal of the season, did the Belarus native. Now, Farrington, who was on that hot point streak, chips one into there. I think he used the sand wedge there. Daniel trying to keep it down here. Morrow behind the net. That puck's been in the air almost as much as it's been on the ice tonight. Esri trying to get out from that net. They're sandwiched in there with the orange, white, and black doing a good job on the defensive unit here. The slam tries to get the Fanatics into this one for the Icebreakers to take the lead here. The power play has expired, so another one has gone by the wayside. And uh, trip and fall there as Sam Turner, the St. Louis native, takes a spill to the ice. That beautiful hip check by Nada. Blake Nada, we, we've seen, he hasn't scored yet. He was really close last week. In fact, we thought he had scored a goal and it was eventually not ruled that way. He was on the assist, but uh, he has brought a lot of physicality to the team as Blake Nada. Yeah, a ton of energy every time he's on the ice and he hits hard, finishes all his checks. There he is there leading with his stick, but the Dashers will recover the puck. 10.54 remaining here. Trying to make his way through with Seth Insor, but couldn't make it through a very narrow lane of two icebreaker defenders, and the icebreakers will dump it the length of the ice, and that will draw the icing call. Also want to thank Nova Southeastern University, Auburn Career Center, Menor Ice Arena, Fitness First, Ganley Village Automotive, JD Cleaners, and Burger IM. And Jared, if I heard correctly, the Meet the Icebreakers is taking place tomorrow at Burger IM, I believe at noon. Let's double check that one. Got to get our fact checkers on that. Yeah, check that big fact book. That one goes off of Stewart Dance. Get it. I believe it is at noon tomorrow at Burger IM, which is uh, located near 306 on Menor Avenue. Now, right here, Mitch Atkins had a good opportunity at scoring on Brant, but Brant closes him out. There are some players going tomorrow at noon to the uh, Morley Library in Painesville to read some kids, but that Burger IM event is on Sunday at noon. Sunday at noon. I'm getting all my days mixed up. So, tomorrow at the Morley Library. The icebreakers getting out there in the community, and then Sunday afternoon, go to Burger IM, grab a burger, and meet a few icebreaker players. Conway was trying to meet the back of the twine there, but it bounces off the pads of Harley White, and now here come the Dashers. Quick on the counter. Naher centers it to Atkins. Atkins to the slot, and he was trying to get it to Quintos there, but a good job by the guys at Double Blue to keep it away from the net. Now here comes Conway, the Painesville, Ohio native. Feeds it right side to Fowler. Fowler was Berger. Berger cannot maintain control of the puck. And here goes Buchel going the other way. The Lansing, Illinois native. I never heard of Lansing, Illinois before reading the Dashers line. I've heard of Lansing, Michigan, but Lansing, Illinois. And as we get set for uh, the officials to take a break on the ice, I want to thank our off-ice officials, Scott Tennant, Greg Butella, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arala, Joe Knight, Ryan McDonald and Brandon Cottis, Taylor Ruyer on game day operations, Frank Schmidt operations intern, Larry Rummel, Al Moon, and Lawrence Rummel on the sound crew, Jared Tennant, communications manager, and alongside me on color commentary, and Casey Healy on the video stream. Jared, as we're 9.37 left here in the first period of play, what do you think so far in the first half? Uh, a little bit sloppy for sure by the icebreakers. They had a couple of good scoring chances that were ruined by their own mistakes, especially that last play with Henry Berger just could not get his stick on it. But overall, they're playing hard and they're playing tough against a physical Dashers team, physical and skilled Dashers team, I should say. With Kids Day coming up on Martin Luther King Day, it's a good time to remind you about the Kids Club, the Junior Icebreakers, brand new club. Members receive a membership T-shirt and card, having special access to events with players, and will receive free admission with a paying adult during select games throughout the 2019-20 season. Cost is just $15 per season per child. For more information, the next time you're here, stop by the merchandise table or visit menoricebreakers.com. It's a, it's a trio of promotions this weekend. As tomorrow, it's first responders night. We'll finish our two-game home series with the Dashers. All first responders, please come out. You will receive a $3 discount to tickets to tomorrow's game. And, Jared, I don't know if you remember, it was this weekend last year, first responder night. In over a five-hour period, we received about a foot of snow. And after this game, we needed the first responders to clear these northeast Ohio roads. I do remember my 20-minute drive home taking two hours. That was a great night. 
Two hours? Two hours. Oh my gosh. We're about 15 miles an hour on the highway. <laughs> well, at least you were safe. But yeah, it was bad, and we needed the first responders. We're glad they enjoyed that game. That was a, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say we beat the Dashers 6 or 7 to 0 that night. It was a good icebreakers game. The weather conditions, unfortunately, were the exact opposite and terrible. And a whistle on the ice now, offsides. 9-14 remaining. The icebreakers have a trail 7 to 5 in the shots on goal category so far. And uh, of course, tonight is Educators Appreciators Night. And as we said, Monday will be the Kids Day. So kids 5 to 12 will get their tickets for just $5 with a paying adult. And as always, children 4 and under attend the game for free. Part of our fun, affordable family activities throughout the weekend. Right now, though, it's the Dashers and the Icebreakers 1-1. Two goals scored in the first five minutes, one for each team. And scoreless since. Now, the Icebreakers across the neutral zone. Get it to the center, try to get it to Ezra. I'll tell you one thing, I don't know if you would agree, Jared, it's nothing to do with the game and it doesn't affect the people at home. Normally kind of chilly here in the ice arena and it's cold, getting cold outside, but is this not one of the hottest it's ever felt here in the ice arena? I'm not the degree with you there, I'm actually kind of cold. You're kind of cold, well, point taken. I'm burning up, but the action here on the ice has been hot and 827 now remaining in the first period of play. Thanks again for making us a party for Friday night. Hallgood, who had that beautiful assist earlier. Now there's Tessarero. And Tessarero had a tremendous performance the last time here. But here goes Blake Nato. Winds up. Good deflection off the stick of Justin Browson. Browson, one of the top players, of course, for the uh, Dashers, has just returned. He's 8-4-12 in 14 gameplay scoring line. And uh, he had even that out in the Icebreaker series, making that... 12 points in 12 games. Uh, definitely a welcome addition back for the guys in white, orange, and black. Now Henry Berger gets it to Brody Duncan. Center winds up, slaps it forward, hard off the backboard. 7.40 remaining here in the first period of play. Dashers will clear it. Duncan, quick pass, outlet to Berger. Berger trying to chip it forward to Nada. Nada, the deflection pass to Stuart Dant. Stuart Dant leaves it for Diaz, or excuse me, not Diaz, that is Haytham away, the newest icebreaker, number 24, acquired off waivers uh, from the Port Huron Prowlers. And he is the 61st icebreaker to take to the ice. Possibility, depending if Jordan Brandt plays all of the time, that backup goalie now Bradley Conrad Woodman could be number 62. But right now, Brandt doing a good job in between the pipes for the icebreakers. And Fowler trying to get it past... His man to beat, Ben Buchel, in a whistle now at 6.55. I think in a lot of ways, this Dashers team and the Icebreakers are two of the most similar teams in the league. When you look at their roster, they're both led by that go-to option on offense for the Dashers is Fred Hine. For the Icebreakers, it's Declan Conway, although you could argue that's Justin Browse now that he's healthy. But they have, they're both, uh, two, like I said before, they're two of the top three defensive teams in the league. And they're just overall solid defensive teams that kind of struggle a little bit on offense. Now Tim Perks trying to keep that puck down. Good to see Perks once again back on the ice. Looking to get it to the slot there to Declan Conway, who would have loved to pick up number 27 in a full night of FPHL action. When we return from the first intermission, we'll bring you the scores from around the league, including an early start in Eastern Division action between the Danbury Hattricks and Elmira Enforcers. All the other games starting at the 7.30 or 7.35 time. 8-6 shot on goal advantage for the Dashers. Dashers now in possession of the puck. Hallgood was working forward, and a good heads-up play there made by Jordan Brandt. And Jordan Brandt did more than a serviceable job, I believe, for the Icebreakers win. Rodebush uh, was recovering from his fight, actually, with the Dashers. But, you know, it's hard to replace Rodebush with so rock solid, but it's not like Jordan Brandt is a slouch by any means in between the pipes. No, he's definitely a serviceable goalie in this league. He has a 900 save percentage. He played well in limited action when Rodebush was out for a couple of weeks earlier in the season. Esri sends that one bouncing off, and now Dasher's quick to counter. Bounces off the stick of Nate Farrington, and we told you that Nate Farrington had been on, uh, had been on excuse me, a bit of a hot streak. Dasher's now looking for a goal to take the lead. Nate Farrington had uh, previously been on a 1-4-5 scoring line over the three-game stretch before the Thunderbirds shut out 
the icebreakers last Saturday. And Nate Farrington, most games suited up by an icebreaker player now at 82, followed by Alex Morrow now at 78. And he's been a key instrumental part, and that's why Nate Farrington was named a captain. Dashers now regain control of the puck. They'll get that one up to Naher. Icebreaker down behind the net. But now they are able to work it up here on the near boards. A little volleying action here as the icebreaker's on the change. Good job by Blake Nada, just poking his stick in there so they couldn't take that hard shot from the circle. As uh, Quintos was looking to wind up there from the middle of that left circle. 4.49 now remaining. 1-1's the score from Menorice Arena. We'll do it again tomorrow at 6.30. Pre-game shortly before and a whistle on the ice there. And it's hard to believe we'll be playing the Dashers for the last time in the regular season tomorrow. Yeah, it seems like these two teams, every other weekend, dating back to last season, it seems like they play each other. Of course, they had a 11-game uh, season series last year, cut down to eight this year with the addition of the four new expansion teams. But, yeah, after tomorrow night, that's the last time we'll see Danville this season. Having seen Danville this much in the first part of the season, almost akin to, to what Watertown was, I would, I would say, last year. We, we saw them quite a bit through January and then not much afterwards. Now Watertown, we won't see them till the very end of the month, the last homestand, and that, not since the opening homestand. So playing the Dashers in bunches and both of these teams, as Jared said, very close together in, uh, in where they're at in the standings. So wanting to pick up some wins against a quality opponent. Now here's Haytham away. Gets it to the slot to Perks. Bounces off of the stick of Harley White who came out. He's pulled out there. Icebreaker's unable to capitalize. Now Daniel Luck from the blue line. That takes a deflection off of the stick of Levi Armstrong. Seems like the Dashers have blocked like about half of the Icebreaker shot attempts in this period. They're just getting their sticks and getting their bodies in front of those shots and making it easy on their goaltender. Now helping out Harley White in his first start since Gordachuk was called up to the Birmingham Bulls. Another whistle on the ice at 3.36 remaining now. And want to remind you, most Southwest Grill caters any events, office, lunches, house parties, tailgates, and more. Wedding recitals, weddings, ballet recitals, and even thumb wrestling tournaments. They'll fill your fajita, taco, and nacho bars with fresh and flavorful ingredients that are sure to please everyone. Just order at moes.com slash catering or visit us at our Menor, two locations, South Euclid or Mayfield stores. Welcome to Moe's. And don't forget that the Founders Room is the ultimate icebreakers experience. For $30, you'll enjoy restaurant quality food as well as a chance to meet head coach Ian Duncan and the icebreakers players at each and every home game. Go to menoricebreakers.com or call 440-290-8502 during business hours and check out the Founders Room here at Menorice Arena. And I missed that penalty call, but A.J. Tesserero is in the box. He'll sit for two minutes for the Dashers. So that'll put the icebreakers on the Lake Health power play. But Danville looking to get a quick shorthanded goal, speeding through, but now some extracurriculars. Brody Duncan, Henry Berger, and it is Jesse Naher who spun around and got that shot on goal. Duncan just took a cross check to the face. Looks like it might have been unintentional as he kind of moved right before he um, Nahir came in with that cross check. And Nahir kind of was doing a spin move to try to get a rebound shot on. So we'll see how they, it looks like he's going to be joining them and we'll have a five on three Lake Health power play, which you would hope to be able to capitalize. You got to check out the Live Healthy Fitness Center here, Cata Corner to Menor Ice Arena. You'll enjoy convenient hours, state-of-the-art exercise equipment and a friendly experience staff. A membership offers everything you need to help you reach your health and fitness goals and keep those resolutions going strong. So five on three hockey and pretty much for all of the two minutes as they are only 10 seconds apart there. Yeah, and that was a heck of an effort by Nair just to create that chance at the net. Got the steal down in his own defensive end and took it all the way coast to coast, but just a little bit too aggressive after the whistle. Yeah, he almost had a shorthanded goal eight seconds into their penalty kill. It was an impressive move. So now, Brody Duncan 
circling that one around the Dashers defensive zone to Pestuka, who would like his first goal, former Carolina Thunderbird and Columbus River Dragon. And the wind-up shot, and Brody Duncan puts it in right side! 2-1 Icebreakers! They capitalize on the five on three. And now, with 2.52 remaining in the period, the Toledo, Ohio native gives the Icebreakers the lead as we, in the waiting moments of the period. I'm wondering if White might have been screened and just didn't see that shot. It looked like he wasn't able to track the puck correctly because that was not really that hard of a shot. It was just a harmless wrist shot from the point that was low on his glove side and it just beat him. Might have been tipped in front. It's just weird looking goal. Well, the thing about it is with the extra couple guys, you can easily, as you say, screen out a little bit. You can afford to use one or two of those guys to obstruct the view. And Harley White just sees that one go by right side. Brody Duncan picks up his sixth goal of the season and his 20th point. So we talked about we talked about Fred Heim picking up his 20th goal and Brody Duncan picks up his 20th point. And it was for Pastuka that's his first point as an icebreaker. Pastuka's first point and Stephen Fowler, who we said getting him more into the offensive full, he picks up an assist as well. And the icebreaker still on the power play five on four advantage for the next 41 seconds. Slam getting the Fanatics into it here as Menner takes the two to one lead with two minutes left here in the period to play. So Yuri Pestuka with his five years in Carolina at a 74, 101, 175 scoring line. He had a five point scoring line for the River Dragons in a brief stint with them this season. Alex Morrow had to slow his momentum down, almost collided into the referee unintentionally there at the other end. 22 seconds left in this Lake Hill power play. And Jared, you wanted to see Yuri Pastuka kind of get going here as he's been a very, kind of like a Brody Duncan as far as an offensively minded defenseman. And he gets the assist and ironically feeds it to Brody Duncan. Yeah, and when your offense is struggling, especially you need guys like that to, to step up, guys that have done it, got veterans that have been there. And I think Pashuka's coming up on 200 points for his career now, so it's good to see him getting going. And we we uh, we talked about the need for the icebreakers to get more offensive wheels going, give some grease to that engine with John Butita getting called up, uh, Parker Moskal being traded, Declan Conway was the lone man in that high high octane scoring line as far as the points go, so. Brody Duncan not far off from being one of the top offensive players as he actually now is your number two point man as a defenseman for the Icebreakers as he picks up his 20th point, only trailing Declan Conway. Nahir feeds that one to Zlock. To be fair, he still doesn't have as many points as Parker Moskal or John Butita did as an Icebreaker earlier this season. Kind of amazing, that line, all three of those players are still within the top 10 scorers in the league. Butita has been up in the SPHL for five games. Moscow spent five games up there. He just returned down to Columbus, but it just shows you that line was so good. That was a very talented line. And you know, you look at the team though, there is still a lot of offensive weapons. You got Brody and um, uh, Pestuka back there as offensive minded defensemen. You got Nate Farrington and Alex Morrow, kind of your, your mid range point guys as well. And then, you know, if you could get Mark Esri back to last season form as well, he's still hanging around there at 16 points and still hanging on to the uh, most points in Icebreakers history. And uh, a lot of weapons. And if you could get Stephen Fowler back into the fold scoring as well, there are a lot of guys that could step up. But, yeah, Butita and Conway and Moscow, that, that, that trio was very strong. And Butita and Conway had some tremendous chemistry together as well. Um, but to lose two parts of that in a short period of time was a tough thing for any team to do. So it's nice to see Yuri Pestuka from the Columbus River Dragon trade uh, pick up a point as well. Stephen Fowler returning from injury. And now if you could keep everybody healthy and on the ice, we'll see if this offensive unit can maybe pick up a little bit where they left off. Perk sends that one bouncing off of the right glove of Harley White. Only 18 seconds left here. Fowler dumps that one behind the net. 12 seconds remaining in the first period. Oh, Conway had a chance between the circles, but he couldn't get off a hard shot. And now the Dashers might be able to get one off for the blue line. Tessarero breaks free and sends one behind that. Nice job by 
Tessero to get the shot off. But at the end of the first period, it's the Icebreakers 2 and the Dashers 1. That was a very good job by Alfonso Diaz to hold off and avoid that. It would have been a needless penalty there at the end with Tesserero coming into the Icebreakers zone. Mitch Hawk, Hawgood and Atkins found uh, the long assist to Fred Hine for his 20th goal. And that was a beautiful one from Fred Hine to give the early, excuse me, Logan Hawgood and Mitch Atkins to Fred Heim. At 17.03, then Blake Nada picked up his first official icebreaker goal from the right circle, tied it up at one, and at 2.52 remaining, it was Brody Duncan from the center of the blue line from the double assist from Yuri Pashtuka and Steven Fowler. So 2-1 at the end of the first period. And that, that was huge, though, Jared, for the icebreakers to be able to pick up one in the final couple minutes and maybe swing that momentum into these talks during the Levant Blue first intermission. Yeah, that was a pretty evenly played period really on both sides. You can see by shots on goal, 12 to 11 in favor of the Dashers. For the icebreakers going on top that period, that's big going into the second, trying to get some momentum against this Dashers team. It, it beat him, uh, I believe, last time these two teams played. So we're going to step away, and when we return, we'll bring you the Vitamix saves of the period, as well as take a look at the scores from around the league in a busy night in the FPHL. Keep it right here on YouTube.com.
Welcome back here to Menor Ice Arena where the score is your icebreakers two and the Danville Dashers won in what was a great first period of play here in part of a three to four days at Menor Ice Arena. We'll finish this season series out with the Dashers in the regular season tomorrow and then the Rumblebees on Monday as we get set for the second period of play. Don't forget flex game packages are available. Seven game packages and that's seven vouchers to use at any home game still available this season. For more information, go to menoricebreakers.com or call 440-290-8502. Also want to tell you about the Booster Club, officially launched our Booster Club. Visit the merch table when you're here or menoricebreakers.com for more information. JD Cleaners, the preferred dry cleaners for the Men Ice Breakers, where customer service is their priority. They take pride in customer satisfaction by providing quality dry cleaning and laundering services while making the drop-off and pickup of delivery your clothing pleasant and speedy. And Wingate by Wyndham LaMalfa, the preferred hotel for the Men Ice Breakers. Visitors coming from in and out of town can take advantage of special room rates when mentioning the Men Ice Breakers when making reservations. And now we're going to take a look around the scoreboard in the Federal Prospect Hockey League. Well, the big game tonight in Danbury Ice Arena. Elmira's on top of the hat tricks, 5-2. to two. A Big story in that game, Ahmed Mafus scored his 800th point in, in his FPHL career. That's most of any player in FPHL history by far. Columbus is on top of Watertown, 1-0. to zero. Port Huron edging out Battle Creek so far, 2-0. And at the end of one, Delaware and Carolina are tied at two goals apiece. The Vitamix saves of the period. Vitamix, fueling you from practices to game day, your performance and feed your life. It's Harley White with nine for Danville and Jordan Brandt with 11. If you're just joining us, it's not Jesse Gordachuk. It's not Austin Rodebush. As first, Gordachuk was called up to the Birmingham Bulls of the SPHL, and then it was Austin Rodebush shortly after getting called up to the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, two teams in the 10 team SPHL. Well, right now, it's Educators Night here at Menor Ice Arena. A good crowd on hand. They had some great festivities for them during the break. And tomorrow, it's First Responders Night, where first responders will get in with a discount of $3 less per ticket as we honor our first responders. Great ones here in Northeast Ohio and nationwide. And on Sunday, Kids Club Day. So all kinds of fun things going on here. And we're getting set for the second period action. Also want to thank Spuddy's Tavern, the preferred restaurant of the Menor Icebreakers. Spuddy's Tavern, located Menor on the Lake, will give fans 10% off their bill after Icebreakers games when you bring in your ticket stub as the two teams take to the ice. And I know there's a uh, group in town today. You got to check out and get a group together. Discounted tickets are available for groups of 10 or more people. Contact us directly for more information on a, how to schedule your group for a night at the ice arena. Now, Jared, we've got the guys from the county seat of Vermilion County in today. When you take a look, we have Danville tomorrow, Battle Creek on Monday, and then it's two away at Carolina before Carolina comes back for that Sunday game. So with the Thunderbirds, three games in a row, you gotta think you have to pick up multiple wins this weekend. Yeah, I mean, those three games in a row against Carolina, to sweep the Thunderbirds would be almost like unheard of. So at this point, you've got to get as many points as you can against with these two games against Danville and then that Battle Creek game on, a mon on Monday afternoon here at Menor Ice Arena. And it doesn't get any easier after that. It's two at Port Huron, two at Columbus, two Port Huron, and then finally two at Elmira, and then keeping pressing it, two back with Port Huron. We'll know the Prowlers in and out over the next month, but that is not an easy stretch. And after that, you see the Thunder again who have been picking up speed. When you take a look at the standings, Delaware at 8-17, still one of two teams yet to play in overtime along with Battle Creek. They're at 24 points, have not been counted out here in the FPHL. And we'll play them four games in a row in mid-March. Those could be very important games. You never know at that point, especially for the Thunder. Well, we're back underway here from Menor Ice Arena, second period action. Thanks for making us a part of your Friday night. Again, a big happy 60th birthday shout out to my mom, Mary. And right now, the Icebreakers with a two to one lead as newest Icebreaker, Haytham away, skates over the right circle, gets its slot, bounces off of uh, Harley White. And now the Dashers trying to clear it away. Dashers in the Western Division currently in second place, uh, but having played more than Port here on the numbers are a little skewed 
one way or the other as they haven't matched it. What a move there by Mitch Atkins. He cut back hard on his skate and worked it to the slot. 19.04 remaining in the second period of play. Tim Perks crosses left circle, winds up, goes hard off the back glass. Now a big board here on the near boards as a dasher sends an icebreaker up against the boards. That one chips forward. Brody Duncan, nice spin move there to Tim Perks, but unable to keep control of it. And flipped into there by Fred Hine, who picked up his 20th point on the season. That's how the Dashers got their first goal. Logan Hallgood found him wide open. Now Henry Berger was looking to get it to follow there in the slot, but that passed a little wide. And it's one man to beat here for Justin Browson, who returned <laughs> last weekend against Menor. And he almost did beat that one man with that nice little toe drag move. Don't let Justin Browson's number fool you. He has only 12 points, but he's only played 14 games. So just under a point per game for Justin Browson, longtime Danville Dasher. Pretty synonymous with the Dashers. Now, wind up there from Nate Farrington, who we talked about was on that five-point streak before the shutout loss to the Thunderbirds. Nate Farrington at 18 points is your third highest icebreaker point total. Wind up shot there, and Brant will lean over and make the save. When you look at most goals scored, it's Declan Conway at 26, Nate Farrington at six, Brody Duncan ties him at six, and then Alex Morrow and Mark Esri both at five. Point total, it's Declan Conway at 45, Brody Duncan at 20, Farrington at 18, Esri 16, and Morrow 15. So 17-42 remaining here in the second period of play. I want to thank Taylor Ruyer, Game Day Operations, Frank Schmidt, Operations Intern, and our sound crew, Larry Rummel, Al Moon, and Lawrence Rummel. Off the draw now, Alex Morrow takes a shot from behind. The Dashers in control of the puck. Only the goalie to beat. A lot of action there. Gola was in the slot as well. Good job by the back line by Menner. Now from a kneeling position, trying to keep that play alive is Gullo. The lefty out of Penfield, New York, will actually have a birthday on Sunday from the Dasher squad. Now Gullo working it into that corner. Daniel will skate out to get it, tries to get it to Morrow. Morrow loses it with some physicality there from the Dashers. 14 to 12, the shot on goal advantage in favor of Danville, but the scoreboard is two to one with the one goal lead for the guys at double blue. Farrington now. Trying to work it into neutral zone. Nice move there made by Mitch Adkins, but an offsides call there. 16-38 remaining. Also want to thank Casey Healy on the video stream, Jared Tennant on color commentary, and communications manager Scott Tennant, Greg Butella, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arella, Joe Knight, Ryan McDonald, and Brandon Cottis are all vice officials. Now off the draw, Berger to Duncan, right to left. Duncan will flip it forward, goes off of the pet, or jersey of Hallgood, and Danville recovers the puck. Now flips forward, but it is Stuart Dan able to take control of the puck, and he'll send one hard off the back glass. The net moves just a bit, and then Ensor and Nada collide as the play concludes. You know, it doesn't feel like it, but the Icebreakers have points in three out of their last four games, of course, because they have, have only won one of those games, but definitely uh, taking steps in the right direction. Weeks just need to start stringing some wins together. Well, the draw now from the left defensive circle. It'll be Stuart Dant and Mitch Atkins by the Dashers net. Berger will flip that one forward, tries to get it to Pinkowski. Good clear by the Dashers down along the boards, but a nice stop there by Duncan. Now, Duncan and Berger. They have a, found a decent amount of chemistry manning that back line. Yeah, and I, was, I think I was glad actually to see that Ian Duncan ended up splitting up Yuri Pashuk and Brody Duncan. Those are your top two defensemen by far. And when you put them out on the ice at the same time, it kind of limits your uh, other two pairings. Well, also when Yuri Pashuk and Brody Duncan have a lot of similarities in uh, both being offensively minded, um, so 
you know, saving some of that in reserve is not a bad idea. Ensor now from the blue line, right side, gets that forward to Quintos. And a save made there by Jordan Brandt. So Jordan Brandt looking for a win to put him over a personal 500 at two and two right now. And as we'd said, the Alberta, Canada native who played collegiately at Portage College, he has looked pretty solid in his uh, starts when Rodebush was injured for that brief period. He's doing a good job tonight controlling all those rebounds, making it tough on the Dashers. And backup goalies, neither have taken to the ice yet this season. Bradley Conrad Woodman for Menor, and former icebreaker but never took to the ice, Braddock Allen for Danville, just signed right before this weekend series. Yeah, if you're an icebreaker goaltender and your last name is not Rodebush, it's been hard to find ice time this season. Yeah, we were talking about it. Derek Moser announced his uh, retirement in mid-December. The bus stop was a good goalie as well. He said, hey, Derek, maybe uh, retirement short-lived? <laughs> Definitely could use him right now. Just to have an extra, uh, you know, solid guy. Not, we don't know what Bradley Conrad Woodman has to offer yet. We haven't seen him. That one goes into the safety, and it could be a solid addition as well. But Moser... Set the initial save records uh, for the Icebreakers. Was the goalie for the first Icebreakers win. Big part of a lot of the Icebreakers' success in a very roller coaster first season. And Rodebush then was the workhorse of the FPHL. Nice glove save made there by Jordan Brandt. It was goalie mania this week in the FPHL. If your goalie didn't get called up, I you were one of the few teams in the FPHL that that didn't happen. I mean, I'll go through it at the next break that we have or stoppage in play, but Rodebush's call-up was kind of directly related to uh, some of the NHL call-ups up at the highest level. And that is cool to see that down this stretch in the hierarchy, the FPHL is in line with the NHL. Now Farrington boarded up there on the far boards. Danville always oh, looking for a shot in the slot. And Alex Morrow with a big hip check there. The Westerville, Ohio native who played at Otterbein University here in Ohio. Now Alfonso Diaz getting forechecked by Zilak, the Czech Republic native. Morrow has a chance here, crosses the blue line over the circle. Murray will force him wide. Still able to get it to Ezri. Ezri's got the flipping all around the perimeter of the net. And nice move by Harley White to just scoop that one and say, hey, let's send this right now because Ezri had that one rattling all around the rim. So looking back at that Rotobush call up, I'm probably going to butcher most of these names, but the Florida Panthers had some injury issues with Sergei Bobrovsky. They called up San, Sam Montembeau from the Spring, Springfield Thunderbirds in the AHL. Thunderbirds called up Ryan Bednard in the ECHL with the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Greenville called up Jake Theot from the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, and the Rail, Rail Yard Dogs called up Austin Rotobush. So it was really was a ripple effect all the way down. That to the is FDHL actually a level. really cool stat to know. I didn't know it went that high up. I, I, I had known it at least went up to the East Edge, so that is cool to know. I took Austin some detective Rotobush. work for the, to find that one out. Jared Tennant on the case. Got to give him the uh, point there. That is, that's good to know. I mean, that is pretty cool to know. An NHL, what was the NHL team? The Florida Panthers? Florida Panthers. We have them to thank for losing Rotobush. <laughs> Thanks, Florida. We usually have them to thank for the uh, leftover rainy weather and weather patterns when they get those crazy storms down there. Stuart Dant crosses the blue line. Now over the circle, wind up, knocked out by Harley White. Nada was looking for goal number two on this night and season. May I ask what exactly a swamp rabbit is, though? I'm still not sure. That kind of sounds scary. Like some murky-looking rabbit. I mean, the hat trick's got a nice-looking rabbit coming out of that top hat. Greenville's logo is, uh, looks like a standard-looking rabbit. I'm not sure why it's a swamp rabbit. Okay. I don't know. Is, there an actu is that an actual species, a swamp rabbit? The important questions. Yeah. Pondering here from Menorai Serena in a 2-1 to -one game with 12.05 remaining. Wind-up shot there. Wow, Fred Hine had some fire behind that one. He was looking for goal number 21. 
They talked about Justin Browson being synonymous with the Dashers. I would say Fred Hine is another one of those names. And when you think of Danville hockey, you think of Fred Hine and you think of Justin Browson. Now behind the net. 17 to 14, the shot on goal advantage. Still in favor of Danville, but Menner with the one goal lead. Levi Armstrong is going to get boarded up there by Joe Keenan. Joining in is Yuri Peshtuka, Czech Republic native from the River Dragon trade. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it Vaughn Clausen who we traded over that had the, uh, the assist on the overtime win for Columbus last weekend? I think it was Clausen. Parker Moskow's just been on a tear since he got sent down from Pensacola in the SPHL. He's got 10 points in three games for Columbus. Gullo feeds it, and he gets it to Levi Armstrong. Very easy, one-two punch, back left corner. And uh, the back line and Brent didn't quite see that one coming as they just moved that one like clockwork there to take a 2-2 two -two tie now. Yeah, I mean, credit to the Dashers. That was just a great play. They just beat Brant that time with a nice little bit of passing in the slot. So that's the first goal of the period and breaks a about 13-minute stretch without a goal. We'll get the official scoring confirmation here from you for you in a moment. But anyway, you slice it. It's two to two. Levi Armstrong will uh, pick up the goal there, his third of the year. Now with a three-three-six scoring line from number seventeen for the guys in white, orange, and black. Gullo and Hallgood on the assist, working that one left to right. And they made it look easy, but sometimes you just do the things, the simple things very well, and, and it's enough. And it ties it up. I, I'm not sure what the breakdown was. If It was a good play by Danville, but it almost seemed like very smooth, not very uh, challenged. Yeah, for Logan Hallgood, he came into this game, 21 games played, one goal, no assists. He's got two assists. One on each Dasher's goal tonight. Logan Hallgood, the, well, he's listed as a couple of different uh, numbers, but he is the Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada native. Nada sends that one deflecting off of a Dasher stick, and we're 10 minutes into the second period of play, a 2-2 game. As Jared said, we didn't see much scoring the last two times we played. And uh, definitely seeing a bit more tonight. That was a fun one, though, that goalie battle between Gordachuk and Rodebush. And Harley White will make the breadbasket save there. Official timeout. Next time you're here, fans, check out the mobile team shop next to the bleachers and get your official Icebreakers merchandise. Gear up for the season with the only source of official Icebreakers merchandise. And coming soon... It will be available online for shopping as well, so that's a pretty cool thing. And tomorrow night, it is First Responders Night. The two-game home series with the Dashers will round out the season. All First Responders will receive a $3 discount on their tickets to tomorrow's game. Also want to thank a few of our corporate sponsors. Marco's Pizza with locations in Menor on the Lake, Willoughby, Painesville, and South Euclid, Kemp LLC, Conway Land Title, Toe Drag Apparel, CSP Insurance, Wingate by Wyndham Hotel, Market Street Family Restaurant, Global Real Estate Advisors, Spuddy's Tavern, Vitamix, Homelight, an online real estate company, Lake Erie Marine Sales, Mosaic Properties LLC, Stadium Grill, Preston Products LLC, Bethlehem Christmas Lake Park, Cana Winery, Habco Tools and Development, McGarry and Sons, Nova Southeastern University, Auburn Career Center, Menorice Arena, Fitness First, Ganley Village Automotive, JD Cleaners, and Burger I Am. And again, Burger I Am this Sunday afternoon. Meet a few Icebreakers players and grab a burger right here in Menor, Ohio. That's this Sunday. And tomorrow at the Morley Library. 9.33 remaining here in the period. 2-2 two two is the score. 20-16 to 16 the shot on goal advantage in favor of Danville. And uh, action here in the Icebreakers defensive zone. They're able to clear it out. They move it along the far boards. Wind up to flex off the pads there of Harley White. Thanks again for making us a part of your Friday night. 
Action there in the corner. Dasher's trying to clear it out, work it over to the circles. And now into the neutral zone. They'll dump that one into the icebreaker zone. And icing will be the call the against Danville. So the Dashers debuted back in 2011. Commissioner's Cup champions in 2017, runners up in 2015. Men are, of course, debuting last year. The Dashers, the second longest team in the FPHL, only behind the Watertown Wolves. And we'll have a faceoff now, right defensive circle. Nearest Harley White. Dashers quick down there on the far boards in front of their bench. They'll dump it behind the net, and Jordan Brandt. So the Levi Armstrong goal on Hallgood's second point of the night. Two nice assists from the British Columbia native has tied things up here. Men are yet to score this period as we work our way towards the Labatt Blues second intermission. Esri sends that one back. Keenan trying to gain control of the puck. Now over to Peshtuka, who picked up his first point as an icebreaker. Now behind the net, Keenan swings it around in you to Farrington. Farrington, nice little give and go to Morrow. Morrow's got Esri. That pass a little wide. And Morrow will come back to get it. They'll cycle that one all the way back to Joseph Keenan in the defensive zone. Nice uh, jump on the skates there by the official to get out of the way of the puck. Eight minutes remaining here in the second period. Dasher's working into the icebreaker's defensive zone, but men are able to recover the puck. Dimitri Daniel will send it the length of the ice the other way. And all of these games with the Dashers have been very close. As Jared said, these two teams have been pretty much as close to a carbon copy to each other as possible. Obviously their own uh, team, but a couple interesting things. Men are only 5-6-0-1 here at Menor Ice Arena. A win tonight would put them at 500 by that overtime loss at home. Looking to improve there. The other key right now, it's 21 to 17 shot on goal. The Icebreakers are 2-10-0-2 when they have been outshot. Conversely, the club has won 11 of 15 games when tying or accumulating more shot attempts. So they just tied it right there, Jared. And you know, stats aren't everything, but a lot of times they are a pretty good reflection of, of where you're at on the ice. Yeah, especially when these two, like a game like this one where these two teams are so evenly matched, even the slightest edge can put you over the top. And it's 2-2, two 7-14 two, remaining here in the second period of play. 20-20, 20 to 20, everything's tied up here at Menor Ice Arena. Nahir trying to free that puck. He's got Perks and Berger to contend with. Now trying to get that to the slot, back to the blue line. Buchel winds up, that takes a strange deflection that bounces all the way around in a hooking pattern. Quintos feeds it forward. Good job by Berger to block him out. And now the Dashers will recover it in the neutral zone. Feed it back up to Quintos. Quintos to Neher. Neher to the slot to Atkins. Bounces off of the glove there of Jordan Brandt. Almost looks like Daniels on the power play. It's five on five right now. Yeah, they were keeping that thing down here between the circles and the net. That's got to be a too many men penalty. It's what the icebreakers were calling for. No wonder there it looked like there was two. So the official sorting this one out. 6.21 remaining. Again, want to thank Chris Lewis, Rashawn Bailey, Cassie Mann, and Malia Harwood, as well as Lake Health for providing medical staff for tonight's game and throughout the season. That'll be Sam Turner serving the bench miner for the Dashers. Sam Turner, the St. Louis, Missouri native. We'll have a face off draw down at the right circle. It'll be top draw guy Nate Farrington taking it for the icebreakers. Looks like he'll do that with Fred Hein. One of those times where having your bench right next to your offensive zone didn't pay off. And the icebreakers able to win that draw. Daniluk looking to get a deflection off of his shot from the blue line. The penalty, a two bench so the icebreakers on, on the Lake Health power play. Peshtuka evades the board there. 
And the Icebreakers on the Lake Hell power play for the next minute 34, but the Dashers flip it forward. If you remember last time, it did lead to a five on three, which the Icebreakers then scored on the power play, but uh, it was um, Nahir, I believe, that almost scored a shorthand to gold like eight seconds into the previous Lake Hell power play. He drew the penalty though, so that put the Icebreakers on a five on three for about a minute 50 and the Icebreakers did capitalize. Just so sloppy, Try they can't even get it out of the neutral zone right now. And the Icebreakers trying to turn this power play around. The first minute was a bit rough. They crossed the blue line now. Alex Morrow sends it swinging around to Declan Conway. And we haven't said Conway's name much this second period. Obviously teams, you know, with that scoring line so slanted towards him now. Teams really keying in on Declan. Very talented player from here in Painesville, Ohio, but you got a lot more eyes on you now without having that three-pronged attack. And he doesn't have those, like you said, that three-pronged attack, Butita and Moscow. Those three together were so dangerous, but of course Conway now, not as much talent around him on his line. Makes things a little bit more difficult. Well, Brody Duncan and, uh, drew a blank there, Brody Duncan and Nate Farrington are your next two goal scorers at six. With Conway at 26, you know, 20 point uh, differential there in between. Talented players, but Brody and Nate kind of give you that defense, that transitional game and add some scoring and points. But Utita and uh, Moscow and Conway, you're kind of just true full-fledged forwards and scorers. So trying to get one of those guys, somebody to step up and join them, at least get a kind of dual presence there. Icebreakers are going to take a whistle, 4.31 remaining. 10 seconds left in the Lake Hell power play, but they won't be able to score on the advantage as now it is Stephen Fowler going to the box for two minutes as the 1980 album Duke cut Genesis uh, misunderstanding playing here. And that was a, a rough couple of minutes for men who are not really able to get anything fluid. Yeah, I mean, credit to the Dashers penalty kill, penalty kill unit. They're operating at almost 84%. They're one of the better PKs in the league, but just not a good showing by the Icebreakers power play. Once again, they just couldn't get anything going. So seven seconds only in the power or power play against uh, Sam Turner, and that's going to expire right now. So now the penalty kill, the Danville Dashers will have the man advantage for the next minute 45. And since they were playing... Almost on an advantage, it seemed like before. We'll see if they can cap us. Now the Icebreakers will test their penalty kill. In a 2-2 game, have not scored yet this period. Danville, the lone goal. And that's Pistuka trying to clear it. Esri's got it along the bench line. Loses control of the puck, will cycle it back to Pistuka. He'll reset it. He'll dump that one behind the net as the icebreakers on the change. Minute seven left in the man advantage for Danville. Look at that Fred Hine hanging there on that blue line. He was in perfect position and went for the deflection shot. Tessarero, look how that's such a smart positioning by Fred Hine though. He could he saw the icebreakers get cut off, went to the opposite side, the long side, and looked for that feed and they knew where to find him. I mean Daniel Daniel Yuck played that one perfectly. He let out, but Fred Hine just snuck that one right in front of his skate and almost had a perfect pass. A brand new seven game flex package is also available, giving you seven ticket vouchers to use at any Looking for the ultimate icebreakers experience? Purchase tickets for our founders room and enjoy restaurant quality food as well as a chance to meet head coach Ian Duncan and icebreakers players at each and every home game. Tickets start at just $30 and available at menoricebreakers.com or 440-290-8502. Oh, Dalton J with a uh, hat trick in Port Huron tonight, huh? Yeah, tough night for the Bees, down seven to one here in the second period. Port never a good, uh, never a good night when the Bees get blown out. I'm sure the Dashers uh, watching those Port Huron games. Those two teams very close in the standings. Danville at 15, 10, 1 and 1, 49 points. Port Huron 13, 9, 3 and 0 at 45, but. The Dashers have played a few more games than the Prowlers, so you know how important that is? You might say, well, it's early in the season, it is. Well, you don't want to end up playing Carolina in the first round, which I know Columbus is trailing both of them, but both of those teams want to cement their position and get that second spot. 
I would be very interested in uh, Columbus Carolina first round series. Those two teams have played each other really tight this year for the most part. And I think the Danville Port Huron series would be a, a heck of a series as well. Port Huron very fast. Yeah, if Gordachuk is back with the Dashers and Simons is with the Prowlers, that could be a great series. Grant will make the scoop save right now. The Eastern Division, the Icebreakers would hold down the third spot and would play the Watertown Wolves, and it would be Danbury Elmira who are playing tonight. Um, Menner is one and all against the hat trick so far this year and only one appearance, but it was a 6 5 game. That was maybe the game of the year so far. Good breadbasket save made there by Jordan Brandt. Not a ton of defense in that one, if I remember correctly. A lot of soft goals let in. But it was a fun game to watch for sure. Well, the Icebreakers had three goals in the first four and a half minutes. Danbury came back and made it 3-2 by the end of the period and ended up 6-5. That one evades the Dashers bench. They'll cycle that one back to center ice to Palmerville. He'll dump that one behind the fish. Almost snuck past the pad there of uh, Jordan Bramp. I'll never forget though in that game, Austin Rodebush on the five on three down here at the far end where the Dashers uh, are in the pipes right now. He evaded a flurry of shots from the hat tricks scoring line and he ended up making that jumping save where he ended up in a seated position. It was a great, great stance in that five on three. Right now, two to two with a minute 51 remaining. And it'll be a very interesting third period as these two teams have faced each other a lot as a whistle on the ice there with only a minute 44. And the icebreakers have taken the shot on goal advantage, 24 to 22, but another icebreaker going to the box right now. And I think the, uh, the biggest key right now for Coach Duncan's squad is to just mentally play tough this final minute 44 and not give up a goal and get to that intermission, that bat blue intermission, and talk things over, reset for the third period. Yeah, Nate Farrington not really happy with that call. I think he thought the Dasher played that one up a little bit, but either way, it's gonna be two minutes on the kill for the Icebreakers. And that will extend into the first half of a minute of the third period, barring a Dasher score. So I would definitely say the final 12 or so minutes of this period has pretty much been in favor of Danville, they've only been able to come away with one goal, almost in a, a breakaway from Morrow who gets tripped up there at center ice and they catch that. Morrow would have had probably a pretty good look at a one on zero. Yeah, if there's ever a smart penalty, that's one to take if you're Jesse Nahar. Obviously you don't want your power play to end only 25 seconds in, but you don't want to give up a breakaway as well. Alex Morrow with a 5-10-15 scoring line. The fifth highest point score currently for the icebreakers. So the draw will be down at the right defensive circle. So now, minute 33 against Farrington and a minute 56 against Jesse Nahar on the tripping call that maybe saves an icebreaker goal here. Minute seven on the clock, so all kinds of numbers here. And in the second period, it's two to two. As we get ready to roll into the Labatt Blue second intermission when we return, we'll give you the Vitamix saves of the period and also check out that scoreboard. A uh, little spoiler, it was Prowler 7, Rumblebees 1. Rumblebees have picked up their first win, but the Prowler is showing their prowess as Dalton Jay with a hat trick tonight. Glove save made there by the lefty Harley White. And the Prowlers just have a lot of weapons. We saw that in two of maybe the fastest moving games I've seen from Menorice Arena. Uh, their defense actually really came to play in the last series here. But when you got guys like Matt Robertson and Dalton Jay and Graham and Silkanich, a lot of weapons to score from the Prowlers. Yeah, I mean, they put up nine goals last week against Columbus. They had 12 players available. They had their broadcasters, their emergency backup, and they still gave up 11 goals and found a way to be competitive. 11-9 was that game. We saw 11-7 last year versus Port Huron. Was that one of the craziest things you've seen in the FPHL, though, was emergency backup goalie was the broadcaster. They did the game from the bench. Perks, the save there, or shot there, and the net will come off. But was that not one of the wildest things? It was really interesting listening to that broadcast on the uh, Prowler's Mixler account. Was Would you very, say uh, that there very was... Very colorful language. I was going to say, do you think it gave a whole new meaning to color commentary? It was a ton of fun to listen to, though. I'll <laughs> give them credit. Yeah. To pull that off, there's a lot that would go into that. So hats off to the uh, Prowler's 
broadcast crew. Six seconds left in this one. Esri will take it across the blue line and not going to be able to get a shot. Double zeros on the scoreboard. And so that will take us to the Labatt Blue second intermission. The lone goal in the second period was off of the Danville Sticks. To tie things up at 11.04, Levi Armstrong right side. The double assist from Gullo and Hallgood for a second point left to right. Would you say the word would be reset for the third period for Menor? Uh, again, another really evenly matched period. Jordan Brandt playing well, but Harley Whiteson stepping up. He's stopped 24 out of 26 so far in this game and had some nice saves in that second period. The stats in this one show you how close these two teams really are, so we're going to step away. When we return, Jared will bring you the scores from around the league. We'll get you the Vitamix saves of the period, and we'll bring you the exciting conclusion from Menor Ice Arena. Keep it right here on YouTube.com.
Welcome back here to Menor Ice Arena where it's a 2-2 game between the Dashers and the Icebreakers. And uh, momentarily we'll bring you the Vitamix saves of the period as well as take a look at the FPHL scoreboard. As always, the saves of the period are brought to you by Vitamix from practices to game day. Our blenders help you fuel your performance and feed your life. We'll get those for you in just a second as well as those uh, scores from the league. The shots on goal, it's in favor of Menor now. Danville has had the lead in that category most of the game, but currently Menor with a 26 to 22 narrow advantage. Now we're gonna take a look around the league in a busy Friday night. Looks like Elmira is still on top of Danbury, uh, five to two. There's not a ton of changes since the last time we went through the out of town scoreboard. Columbus is all over Watertown. 5-0. Parker Moskal has a couple of goals. He scored them seven seconds apart somehow. Wow. Would like to see a replay of that one. Looks like Delaware and Carolina are still tied at 2-2 two two going into the third period. Good for Delaware. And of course that Port Huron Battle Creek game is kind of a blowout. Prowlers were on top 7-1. to one. And Dalton Jay with a hat trick. Well let's take a look at those saves of the period. Brought to you once again by Vitamix. And it's uh, one goal scored for the Dashers. Nine saves that period for Jordan Brandt. And all 15 of Menor shot were saved that period by Harley White. So Harley White, a strong performance so far. Jordan Brandt right there with him. And for both teams, you know, these guys didn't find out they were starting until yesterday. Yeah, both guys are getting pretty used to sitting on the bench with those workhorse goaltenders in Rotobush and Gordachuk. Yeah, yeah. But obviously short notice here, but that's how when you're a backup, you've got to be ready at all times. Even though yeah. you, you're not playing most weeks, you have to prepare as if you're playing. That's not really a cliche. That's just how it is. I was uh, telling one of the local News Herald reporters, Jeff Judell, he, w he was really impressed with your stat about the, um, the tracing it to the NHL. I gave you the credit as well, Jared, but can, can you, do you have that up still again? I, I was fascinated by that statistic in case anyone missed it. Oh, I'm flattered that you uh, you put that much uh, weight into my words here. That yeah. Means a lot. All right, well, I guess start from the top. So Rhoda Bush, who was called up to the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs of the SPHL, it all started because the Florida Panthers recalled Sam Montembeau from the Springfield Thunderbirds in the AHL. So... To make up for that loss, the Thunderbirds called up Ryan Bednard from the ECHL's Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Swamp Rabbits then called up Jake Theot from the Rail Yard Dogs, who in turn uh, called up Rhoda Bush from the Icebreakers. That is really cool to see. I mean, I, I just think, I mean, because, you know, there's been, what, 170 or so call-ups to the ECHL um, or higher, but, you, you know, there's yet to be an FPHL player yet. To make to the NHL, not that they cannot, and we wish everyone the chance to do so. Um, but while there may not have been an NHL call-up yet, the fact that it affects one of the National Hockey League teams all the way down to the FPHL. So here in Menor, Ohio, Northeast Ohio, and down in Florida, you know where they're playing primetime, multi-million dollar hockey, that, that tier, to see it officially connected uh, degree by degree, I think I think that is really cool. Yeah, and most of those call-ups you can trace all the way up unless it's from an injury at one level or another that isn't towards the high, say an SPHL injury results in FPHL call-up. Most of those call-ups are because the guy at the next level got called up opening up a spot, and it's just a ripple effect all the way down to the bottom. And A lot of people like to talk about the quality of the play in the FPHL and kind of make fun of it, but at the end of the day, it's a legitimate feeder league for these upper-level pro leagues. Yeah, I tried it. We're not affiliated with the team like you see in baseball, but I, I try to explain it to fans uh, from, from Ohio. If you're listening in Danville, you might not know this team, but I'm sure you have a similar team in the area in Illinois. It's kind of like the Lake County captains of, of hockey. You know, the, the captains play single-A baseball, and they're directly affiliated all the way up to Major League Baseball, and a lot of those guys have played. Actually, if you look at the 2010 captains, uh, Francisco Lindor and numerous other guys have not only made it up there, but now you're looking at Lindor eventually probably getting a half a million, half a billion dollar contract at some point. So it is really cool when you can see these guys start off at this level and have success up. But all that said, I still don't know what a swamp rabbit is. 
We'll find out someday and do some research. <laughs> so now we're going to get to the third period of play. So where we stand now is Nate Farrington is in the uh, box now for just five more seconds. And then that will expire here, here in the third period of play for Menor Ice Arena. And only 24 seconds on Nahur. So the icebreakers on a very brief Lake Health power play. In a 2-2 two -two game with 19-31 remaining in the third period of play. In the first of two in a home stand against the Dashers. Tomorrow will be the last regular season matchup between these two teams. Good to see a lot of the live source uh, app uh, jerseys that have been auctioned off this year. A lot of military jerseys as well as Christmas jerseys in attendance here from our fanatics. A couple of more especially jerseys coming up throughout the rest of this regular season. I know there's uh, cancer uh, awareness jerseys coming up in February, I believe. And we'll do the uh, teddy bear toss then as well. Last year, if I'm not mistaken, we threw 288 stuffed animals onto the ice. That one goes high over the uh, the post and uh, whistle on the ice to foul. Do you remember what we did, Jared? We threw that uh, plush shark. I don't remember. What did we name him? I don't remember. I do remember I didn't make it onto the ice, which was a little bit, hurt my pride <laughs> a little bit, but I did my best. I do it. Oh, he had a great name, too. It'll come to me. It's, I'll, I'll try to remember by tomorrow. 1904 remaining here in the third period. Dashers and icebreakers all tied up at two. Alex Morrow makes his way over the blue line. And he's tangled up there with the Dashers. Danville will win it defensively in their own zone now. Get it over to the far boards. Work it center to Atkins who has an assist. Now to Nahur over the right circle. Stake, stick handles his way towards the goal. Now forced behind the net. Good defensive work there by Nate Farrington. The East Freetown, Massachusetts native. Brant has to be on his toes there as that one just goes wide left. Here comes Mark Esri down the far boards. Esri works it right to left. Over to Alfonso Diaz. Diaz flips it off of the boards. 18-20 now remaining in the third period. Thanks for joining us on this Friday night. Now, good pass there. And takes a spill to the ice. Is that Justin Brosson, I believe? Brosson put him in great position. Look, he skates right back there, right circle. He was looking for the quick feed, but a good stance by Stuart Dan, who works it over to Pastuka, and Pastuka will send it wide right. Yeah, I think someone just told us, uh, Jared, straight from Wikipedia, what, what a swamp rabbit is. So they are real. So that's, you trust YouTube comments. Swamp it, rabbits are real things. It's a real thing, huh? Well, it's a large cottontail rabbit found in the swamps in the wetlands of the southern United States, which I guess would be Greenville. They like wet areas and will take right, to the water and swim. Well, there you have it, the Greenville Swamp Rabbits. I was hoping the icebreakers would have scored then, so when I pulled the highlights out, it would have been you reading the definition of a Swamp Rabbit instead of calling the goal. That would have been something special. <laughs> Talking about ECHL nicknames during a goal score, you would love that, wouldn't you, Jared? And I gave you all that credit for that NHL trace-up. 26 to 25 shot on goal advantage here. Both teams trying to get out of the swamp, per se, and break open this tie. Gullo winds up, goes just wide right. See, I worked the swamp in, though, to this game. That You have to like that. 17-14 on the clock. Official, ooh, almost took a stick to that as Pinkowski and Hallgood got tangled up here on the near boards, and that'll draw a whistle. That's a pretty easy call for the official. Check from behind into the boards away from the play. He's going to get a whistle every time. So the Icebreakers have not scored since the 2.52 mark remaining in the first period of play. Give me Logan Hoggood heading to the box for the Dashers to assist on the night. So Hoggood's trip will put the Icebreakers on the Lake Hell power play. Once again, thank you to Lake Hell for providing medical staff for tonight's game as well as training facilities for our players to use all season long right here in Menor, Ohio to help you reach your fitness goals. Cross checking the call. Minute 50 left in the Lake Hell power play. 16.57 on the clock. Nice cut there by Yuri Pastuka. The Czech Republic 
Feeds it to Perk, back to Fowler, winding up, Duncan, and it goes flipping it to the air, right in front of the net. Fowler trying to put it back in and laying out in front of the net is Harley White, says he had enough of that. That one was bouncing all around, and the icebreaker is very close to scoring. A good early chance on this power play. It's their first one of the period. I believe it's their sixth of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Fifth or sixth to this point, they're scoreless. Oh, actually, Brody Duncan had that one in the yeah, first Brody period. Yeah, Brody Duncan had the myself. five on three. So they didn't score on the five on four, but they did on the five on three. So you get to score on the man advantage, but did score on the two man advantage. The double blue on the double man advantage. But now here come the Dashers. Almost had a chance for a two on one as Nayer was sneaking out left side. Quintos was trying to steal that from Duncan. That would have left Jordan Brandt looking at a lot of white, orange, and black coming this way. Now the other way, Conway just gets pushed out of the way from the slot there. They're trying to get it to. The leading goal scorer for the Icebreakers at 26. And Jesse Nair has been very aggressive on this penalty kill. It's not the first time he's nearly had a breakaway. So now I wonder, Austin Rodebush called up to the rail yard dogs. Are there really uh, giant canines with conductor hats walking around in uh, Roanoke? That's a great question. We'll have to, we'll have to ask <laughs> the folks over in uh, Roanoke. Now they'll flip that one behind the net. I wonder when Rodebush uh, will make his debut on the ice. How soon? Could be tonight. Actually, he's playing right now. Is he playing right now? Yeah. As we speak? Henry Dill gave up four goals on 19 shots, and Rodebush has stopped all seven he's faced in seven. Oh, Henry and a half Dill minutes. of uh, Carolina Thunderbirds, correct? You got the all S all all FPHL lineup. Knoxville Ice Bears, who they're playing, Cody Porter, the former enforcer, I believe, in Watertown Wolf. Yeah, that name does sound familiar. So Rodebush stops his first seven saves. There you go, Rodebush. He'll definitely work for you. A whistle on the ice there and a late little tell. And uh, Alex Morrow and uh, I believe that is Seth Ensor, the Sugarland, Texas native. Avoiding an altercation there at the end of that play. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on the SPHL now with everybody Getting called up this week. It's been it's been a wild couple of weeks. Yeah, it's a great year to be a minor league hockey player. A lot of guys getting opportunities at the next level, especially goaltenders. All the goaltending injuries and just poor play at higher levels it results in that ripple effect like we talk about all the way down to the bottom. And we talked about John Butita already with three assists in his first five games for the Quad City Storm in Illinois. Thanks for listening wherever you are in Benner, Ohio, Danville, Illinois, anywhere in between or beyond. We appreciate you joining us here on this Friday night. Mora winds up, deflects off of the pads of Harley White. And now Danville trying to clear that center ice to Atkins. Menner will turn things around, get it to Farrington, crosses blue line over to Mora, left circle, wind up, bounces off of White, rebound shot by Ezri, comes right back out at him. Now back to the left side of the blue, and Berger winds up. That goes wide left. Hanging out there at the slot. Morrill trying to get it, and a good stick move there by Ensor to keep that one away from the slot. Now from the blue line, winding up is Berger. Here comes Fred Eye. He'll dump it. He was looking for Gullo hanging out at the blue line and couldn't get it to him. Nice job by the back line of the guys in double blue. Yeah, for as many times as the icebreakers teed off, they really didn't get a great look at the net. There are a lot of bodies in front. Tough to get pucks through. 29-26 shot on goal advance for the Icebergers. Only a few shots so far in the third period for both teams. That one goes wide right for Danville. So Illinois with a team in the SPHL, the Quad City Storm, Ohio. Not with any teams in the SPHL. Closest would be the Evansville Thunderbolts where Joe Fatoma was Briefly called up to last December. And Fred Hine of the Dashers, I believe he has 19 games past two seasons up with, up, up, up with Evansville. Excuse me. And that would, I believe, geographically be the closest team to Menor, being a state over. And then Quad City would probably be right up there as well. I was looking at the SPHL because I was trying to follow all these call ups, and you got to really, the name that really stood out, Macon Mayhem in Georgia. That's a great it, one. It finally dawned on me that they were also making mayhem. Like, what a great play on words. No, you just can't go wrong. Now they find Fred Hine left side. He's trying to make some mayhem here. He was sending that pass ride right. Well little... done there. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. That, we're just putting out gold nugget after gold nugget here as uh, whistle on the ice. 13.45 and 
This is an interesting game. You know, both teams with a different netbinder. Uh, both guys playing pretty well. And now two minutes on the on the clock will go against the Oxford, Michigan native Tim Perks. But I'm not quite sure in this one. Neither team establishing too much momentum. What it will take to, to crack through. And you almost wonder, decent amount of time left, but is this another one of those games that trickles its way into uh, extra play? Yeah, it seems like a lot of the Icebreakers games as of late have been these kind of close defensive ba battles as the Icebreakers head to the penalty kill here. Tim Perks took a tripping penalty that I actually missed. And Menor uh, hadn't played in overtime and now two of their last few games have gone to not only overtime but a shootout. The Icebreakers yet to win in a shootout. They have picked up an overtime win last year. But none yet this year and never yet in a uh, shootout. Last year, uh, Menor actually had one overtime win. Or one in five in extra play. Turner gets that one over to Armstrong, who had the game tying goal. Now at the center, back to Armstrong, right side, winds up, almost snuck that one into the right corner. Minute 10 remaining here in the penalty kill, and 12.51 on the clock. And a minute left. That's right. The, the SPHL actually does have uh, two Illinois teams, the Pure Rivermen and the Quad City Storm. Almost too aggressive there from Esther. He might have gotten away with one on the forecheck. Atkins here on the near board. Lost Esri now, trying to get to the circle. But he was cut off by Mitch Atkins. Nice defensive stance there. Conway was hanging down there, or excuse me, Fowler, if they could get it to him. But now at the other end, dumped off past the slot. Atkins winds up, bounces back off. Good move there by Brandt. He's going to get tested again on the turn and shoot there from Naher. He's got Brawson at the line. He's got Hine at the line. And now a whistle on the ice. 12.05 remaining. That's going to draw another penalty on the icebreaker. So it'll be 21 seconds of five on three. And a 2-2 game. A tough, tough break for the icebreakers to have two guys in the box. Not a good position to put themselves. Luckily for them, it'll only be for the 21 seconds. But then you're back on two minutes right back to the... Five on four. And I was interested to see how the penalty kill would do without Austin Rutterbush. He's really the main reason why that penalty kill is as good as it is. But so far tonight, the results have been positive. But we'll see how it goes with lengthy penalty kill here. 20 seconds of five on three for minute 40 of five on four, barring a goal. Do we know what Rutterbush uh, ended up with as a save percentage before getting called up? I know, I know he, he worked that number up at least around 9.50, didn't he? Uh, 2.73 goals against and 9.27 save percentage. 9.27. Those okay. numbers were very similar to Gordachuk. I think his was 9.25, maybe 2.69. Stolen there by Atkins, and a nice low save made there by Brent. Being tested here, just as he was when uh, uh, excuse me, when a uh, Rotobush went down, Brand has had to step right into the fire as any good backup goal in the FPHL has to do if there's a call-up or an injury. And he's had to do it now for both an injury and a call-up. Jordan Brandt being tested, looking for win number three on the season. Harley White looking for win number five. And with Pau Roanoke, uh, their goaltending situation, did the Dasher sneak one in? Oh, and Brandt, he got... They snuck it in short side there. And we'll find out if that was from the stick of Naher or there was two dashers there just kind of hanging out right side. Either way, Danville will take the 3-2 lead, 11-27. They scored at almost this exact moment uh, last period. They scored at 11-04. So now at 11-27 remaining, they actually trail one shot on goal, but they take the 3-2 lead hanging out there on the right side. And it's tough when you give up those kind of goals, especially Jordan Brandt just made some very quality goals as well. Um, so we'll see, to get the official confirmation for you. And it is Naher. So, and Brawson was the other guy I was wondering if it was, he gave the assist. They were both hanging out their right side. But Daniels winds up, deflects back out. Oh, that one heads up, almost going out of play. But, uh, Naher, his physicality, and now the finesse at the other end. Three on two advantage, four dashers. That one bounced still around. Brandt couldn't get a glove on it. And trying to work it out of the corner. I'll take a, what were you going to say about Roanoke, though? Oh, with their current goaltending situation, that uh, call up for Rodebush could end up being pretty lengthy. So Icebreaker's going to have to rely on Brandt for a while here, it's looking like. 
So now Esri crosses the blue line, right side, winds up circle, and it'd be great to get Mark Esri back into the scoring, uh, the top tier. He's at a 5'11", 16, and now something else is going on. It's Alex Morrow and Levi Armstrong exchanging a little shoving. Officials sort it out before any fists are thrown. 31-29 shot and goal um, advantage, but 3-2 is the Dashers' lead right now. But Mark Esri had a 51-point uh, first season for the Icebreakers at 16 right now at 67. The all-time ice-breaking leader scorer um, with Declan Conway hot on his heels. A total of 65 career points for the Icebreakers. A tough thing, though, just for Declan is them really keying in on him until that offensive line becomes a bit more balanced. They're, they have a balanced second-tier offensive effort, but it's not as productive as far as the amount of goals being scored. About four or five guys that are putting out similar output. They need at least one of those guys to find a way and uh, pick up some top tier. What a hit there from Richie Pinkowski down to Ben Buchel. Take a spin to the ice. 9.58 remaining. And Icebreaker's holding on to that two shot on goal advantage. But at this point, Jared, what would you say would be the key uh, for Menors? They, they really haven't been able to sustain any sort of momentum. I don't know about you, but just watching them play over these last few weeks, something looks off with their offense. Like they're just not something's not clicking like it was earlier in the season. I get that your personnel isn't the same as it was, but at the same time, it's just you're not getting a ton of quality looks. You're not generating those chances that you were. And the tough thing is in minor league hockey, you know, you're happy to see your guys go, but at this time, uh, you know, you, you 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 have to expect you're going to lose lose players. There's a lot of transactions in this league, so you always have to keep rolling. I mean, heck, last year there was 47 different players take to the ice in the expansion season, and you you have so many different variables that you know. Look at Danville last year. They they started off. Uh, six and one, seven and one. They were even ahead of Carolina early. Remember last week in about the second or third week of the season, they had five, six, seven players called up. Yeah, they just got absolutely decimated by those call-ups and injuries last year. They were a different team at the end of the season compared to the beginning of the season when they were one of the best teams in the FBHL. And all kinds of cool things going on. They, they've added different lights and effects here at Menor Ice Arena. They've got trivia time and Something you have to check out the next time you're here. They had some video board trivia, I think, interactive that you could do from your seat. So if you're looking for a fun time, tickets start at just $13, $16 for the reserve bleachers, and $30, of course, for the ultimate experience in the Founders Room where you get a restaurant-quality meal and a chance to meet head coach Ian Duncan and players before the game. Right now, from Menor Ice Arena, the draw here. The wind-up from Duncan, who's looking for his second goal tonight. So only trailing 3-2 with 9.29 remaining. Plenty of time for Coach Ian Duncan's squad, who played at Bowling Green State University and at the highest level in the NHL for the Winnipeg Jets. Now crossing over the blue line, it's Efimov Barakov. Conway, nice stick handle move there to get into the neutral zone. Now he'll flip that one forward behind the net. 9.04 advantage. 9.04 uh, left on the clock. Three to three shot on goal advantage for Menor. And we talked about that. That has been a good statistic for the Icebreakers, although it's a it's a narrow one right now. But they have fared better when uh, having the shot on goal advantage. With uh, they've won 11 of 15 games when tied or winning. That, that SOG comparison, and right now they do have it, but they trail by one. Danville looking to be the statistical anomaly in that. Behind the net, four check here. Daniel trying to escape free, and the Belarus native does from Minx, Belarus. Glove down by Gullo, Gullo spins away from Daniel, gonna whistle on the ice at 8-10 remaining. And we didn't mention it yet, but the Dashers riding a three game winning streak, that's the longest streak in the FPHL right now, looking to make it four in a row. And there's been some impressive ones. We ended the uh, Danbury 11-game win streak, and then Port Huron came in and continued an eight-game win streak uh, 
Did that end at eight for Port Huron, or did they pick up one more after that? I don't think it made double digits. It did hit nine wins, but I think they might have lost to Columbus after that. I want to thank our off-ice officials, Scott Tennant, Greg Butala, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arala, Joe Knight, Ryan McDonald, and Brandon Cottis, Taylor Ruyer and Frank Schmidt, Game Day Operations and Operations Intern, Larry Rummel, Al Moon, and Lawrence Rummel on the sound crew, Jared Tennant alongside me on Color Commentary and Communications Manager, and Casey Healy on the video stream for bringing this game to you. Now stick handling through is Pashtuka who picked up his first point wearing double blue tonight and another whistle on the ice. Be also interesting to see if any of the chippiness uh, continues. Another thing to keep in mind, it looks like you got an interesting score there in Carolina and Delaware. Yeah, Thunderbirds out shooting the Thunder 46 to 26, but they're all tied at two to two midway through the third period. If you hear the resounding sound of a bass drum coming through the broadcast, one of the new additions here, and it put on a good experience here live for the Fanatics. So we'll have a draw from the right defensive circle, close is Harley White, and the Dashers net, and Fred Hyde quick to turn that one into the neutral zone. Joseph Kane gets it to Pashtuka now. Pashtuka crosses the blue line, leaves that one for Haytham away. Haven't seen Haytham in about a period. Got the start tonight on the starting line, the Ganley Village Automotive starting line. Wind up shot from Fred Hyde, deflects back off of Brandt. Haytham away picked up his first goal ever here in Menor Ice Arena, but wearing red, white, and black for the Prowlers. And now on Menor, as we told earlier in the broadcast, the 61st icebreaker to take to the ice in franchise history. That one will trickle down to White. And White just needs to be a serviceable hand, keeping games at bay for Danville. You know, there's those top tier goalies, Gordachuk, but White has definitely shown a lot of improvement for the Dashers. Especially against this Icebreakers team, he had that shutout on New Year's Eve and only, only needed to make 23 saves, but a shutout's a shutout. Educators night here tonight. And a post-game state, one of the three promotions here in three out of four home games. Now Brody Duncan trying to make something happen here at home. Nice high deflection off the left glove of Harley White. And the Icebreakers will Chase this one back into their defensive zone. 6.21 remaining, and all of a sudden, not as much time left on the clock for the home icebreakers who really were looking to get a home win here and start off this three out of four days with a win, and even their home percentage follower winds up in another flexion. Jared, you talked about it in the first period. There's got to have been at least seven or eight uh, st stick saves made by the Dashers' back line tonight. They're very aggressive defensively are the Dashers. Part of the reason why they're such a good defensive team, it's not solely their net minor, it's the guys in front of them. Not only are the Icebreakers trying to even out their home winning percentage, as that one goes wide left, if the Icebreakers lose tonight, it would be the first time they fall under 500. Morrow crosses that circle, gets tangled up with a Dasher defender. Ezri keeps it alive, nice job, gets it to Farrington! And a nice play by Ezri to get it to Farrington, who got the quick save off, but Harley White makes the save. Once again, good glove save. But yes, the Icebreakers have not fallen below 500 yet this year. Uh, I don't know how you factor as far as the win-loss percentage with overtime losses, but if you don't count those as you know direct losses, they're currently at 13-13, 0-2. So it would be the first time they would be directly under 500. I guess technically they are at a 488 win percentage if you factor the overtime uh, losses. But as far as straight wins and losses, it'd be the first time they have more losses in the column than the wins. And the Icebreakers started just as hot as Watertown. Yeah, but if you're the Icebreakers right now, this clock is ticking down a little bit too fast. Only five minutes to go in the game. Morrow and Esri have been providing some good energy down there in the offensive end for Menor, but just unable to put anything sustained together. Farrington trying to turn, look at that. Strong again, aggressive stance defensively by Danville. Have not been able to, when you had that true scoring line, you, had, you were able to get one guy hanging out in the slot and the others were able to skate free and set it up. Now, they're not really getting that chance to just have somebody hang out there. 4.32, it seems like you just set it in the five minute 
late five minute mark, the time was winding down and now already we're in the back half of four minutes. Three to two, Dashers with the lead here at Menor Ice Arena. Leading 33 to 30, or trailing 33 to 30 shot on goal. But that more important number, winning by one. We'll see what the icebreakers turn to offensively here. It's gotta be a goal to force overtime at this point. Icebreakers have not scored since 2.52 remaining in the first period of play. Which seems like eons ago. Stuart Dant trying to break that and the low pad save made there by Harley White. And Blake, it was a uh, Brody Duncan goal on the five on three. The assist from Pashtuka and Fowler was the last score. Not, if you're an icebreaker fan, if you're a fanatic listening at home, now is not the time you want Harley White to kind of get into a rhythm in the net. If you're a Dashers fan, it's a perfect time. You want him to close this thing out. Dashers cross into neutral zone. Armstrong stays up at a vertical base. Evades falling to the ice. Diaz all over him there. 3.47 remaining now and a whistle on the ice. Definitely been a frustrating stretch for the icebreakers. They're just coming so close all these games, but just coming up just short. They haven't really been blown out this year. I think that 5-1 loss to Carolina was by far their worst loss of the year, but they're just, something needs to change in terms of how they're playing because they're just coming up so close, but so far it seems like in all these losses. But of course, there's four minutes to go here. They still have plenty of time to get something going. Again, you look at it, it's Carolina, Port Huron, Columbus, and Elmira all coming up a tough stretch. A lot of Eastern Division games as well. Um, and Port Huron about every other series. So tough road ahead, but the Icebreakers still in third place. You, you talk about they haven't been blown out. And really, the Icebreakers, you know, 99 goals scored and 81 coming into tonight. Um, 81, one of the better numbers. You know, Carolina obviously only giving up 49, but... Menor is right there, 81. The second least amount of goals scored, 82 for Danville, though. And you talk about those similarities. Danville at 102 to 82, and Menor 99-81. I mean, those almost identical numbers even there. Although, we kind of let it slide by the first icebreaker goal. I forgot. We got to give credit to Blake Nada. Not only did Blake Nada pick up the first goal in his icebreaker career in FPHL, but he picked up goal number 100 on the year. Yeah, it took a little bit too long as they should have hit that number in Carolina, but they, they were Patrick Polifka and the Thunderbirds. But for Nada, that was his second pro goal. He scored one in a four-game stint with the North Shore Knights a couple of seasons ago. Oh, the North Shore, okay. So his first goal as a icebreaker. Where was North Shore located out of? Do you know? Somewhere in Michigan, I believe. Okay. Not sure it's city. Got to get our research team on that one. So now the whistle will bring the draw down to the right defensive circle of the Dashers. Menor, time of the effort, 2.52. That's when they scored left in the first period. Oh, they were actually in Kingsville, Ontario. Oh, I wonder if that was the only Canadian FPHL team. That one goes deflecting off of the glove of Harley White. I didn't know they ever had a team in uh, Canada in the it's FPHL. Cornwall, the Nationals as well. Okay, so a couple of Canadian teams. Menor was the first team in Ohio. I hate to I hate to fact check you here, but there was a team in Dayton. Oh, for right. Before then, they were what one one year? Were they the Dayton, Dayton Demons? Demons, right? Right. yeah, with a Z. I think the Dashers might be headed to the pen, uh, penalty kill here. I did forget about Dayton. It's ben Buchel headed to the box. Well, now's a good time to go on the Lake Health power play. 2.18 remaining in two minutes of that will be on the 5 on 4 advantage for the Icebreakers. Again, a big thank you to Lake Health, the Dayton Demons. That is correct. Well, there has been, what, about low 40s franchises throughout the uh, decade of FPHL? Is it really that high? I, I think I counted one time, and it was at least in the high 30s, if not low 40s, including the, you got to love the Aquasani Warriors. The inaugural Commissioner's Cup champions. Good thing is the league seems to be stabilizing a little bit. Getting to 10 teams this year. Nobody folded last year, which is always a good thing. Can't wait to see the Bloomington Blitz next year. Now, if, you say, if you say it enough times, I think they'll go for it. I, I hope so. We're trying to throw it out there. Right here, it's the Icebreakers trying to 
blitz their way offensively and get down there because time is of the essence. 1.57 on the clock, minute 38 on the power play. Peshtuka sends one hard off of the stick of Ensor. Dashers nursing a one goal lead. Tim Perks now from behind the net. He's looking. He's trying to get it to Fowler. He gets it to Peshtuka. Peshtuka works it over to Duncan. Duncan to the slot to Perks. And oh, it just kind of bounced back off the pads there of Harley White. Not sure why Brant's staying in the net. Wind up over the glass. Yeah, we'll see. We will watch. Will they pull him here and get the extra man down there? That would be a two-man advantage. That would be a six on four, if my math is correct, with only a minute 26 remaining in the game. We'll see if they do that. And Brand is out now, so it's six on four. And Mark Esri skates out. Here we go. Six on four. Open net. Icebreakers. One sixteen remaining. Can't let that one slide down. And Esri now at center ice. He works it over to Pastuka across the blue line. 107, 48 seconds left in the Lake Cal power play. Duncan winds up. That one deflects back off the stick of Conway. 59 seconds left. 3 2 Dasher. Six on four. Conway's there. Boxed out as Peshtuka gets it to Duncan. Duncan winds up, goes for the deflection, goes wide left. 48 seconds left. 29 seconds left in the power play. Peshtuka to Esri, circle. He's got Conway there, flanked with him left side. Dumps it back off a little wide. 37 seconds, 19 seconds left the power play, and an errant pass goes behind Peshtuka. Off the race back to get it. Oh, and it's a Danville. Danville takes it, oh, what a shot. He magnetized that one to the corner. Did Nahir, I didn't think he was going to get it. It was a hard angle from beyond the blue line, and he sent that one like a magnet to the pull of the right post, and the Dashers seal that one at 4-2. to two. That one sinks like a lead, stomach, lead in your stomach. I think even worse is how he scored because that angle was a very tough angle to put it in. I mean, the icebreakers, they just completely shot themselves in the foot. First it was the errant pass clearing the zone for the Dashers, and then Pastuka just gave it right back to Danville when he had possession. Gave him a great look at the empty net, and that's the game. And the icebreakers held scoreless in the second period, and barring a goal score here as they trail four to two, that would put the icebreakers at, uh, well, they got shut out against Carolina, so five of the last six periods they would have been shut out. Not a good, not a good trend. Not gonna win a ton of games like that. And they will be shut out, so the icebreakers fall to 13-4-0-2. The chances to put this one into overtime and continue a trend, and two with the Dashers recently, that expires. So it's an exciting first period if you're a fanatic. It was actually Danville scoring first. Hallgood had that nice long assist, and Atkins chimed in as well. Got it to Fred Hines. Stick salute here for the icebreakers to the fanatics. And Fred Ein scored goal number 20, hats off to him. And that was Blake Nader scoring the 100th goal of franchise history of the second year. At 15-12 from the right circle, tied it up at one. Things look to be going Menner's way at 2.52 remaining. Screened out there on the double advantage. And Brody Duncan got the double assist from Pestuka in his first point and Steven Fowler. And looking back, Jared, didn't, that seemed like the tide turn as they score in the final three minutes of the first period here on home ice, 2-1. Yeah, but, you know, I think I've seen <laughs> too many times over the last month or so where the icebreakers get a flurry of goals, and that's, that's it. That's all their offense for the game. They really struggle to put together a complete game offensively. Only uh, one goal scored in the second period. It was at 11-04 when Levi Armstrong scored his third of the year. Third from the right side, the assist from the left from Gullo and Hallgood on his two-point night. He got second assist. And then at 11:27 remaining, Danville broke the tie open after a decent stretch of no points either way. As Nahur and Brosson flanked that right side and kind of just tucked it in the right corner to take a 3-2 lead. And with 29 seconds left, a blown opportunity on the six on four. And it was Nahur sending that one from the left side of the blue line to a magnet at the bottom right post to seal it at 4-2 and kind of suck the air out of it. You got to give credit to Harley White Stepping in for Jesse Gordachuk getting called up. Jordan Brand had a solid effort, but you got to tip your hand to Harley White here. You know, especially, you know, Harley White kind of started off a little tough earlier this season. He really came into his own, and he's definitely had some success against Menor, so give credit where credit's due to Harley. And uh, you got to think you probably see both of these goalies tomorrow, though, as well. 
Yeah, for sure. I think Otten was just signed as an emergency backup. I believe that Gorda Chuck's call up was temporary based on the situation in Birmingham. But for the icebreakers, they're probably going to be riding Brandt for a while here. So he played pretty well tonight. That last goal, I'm sure he wants back. Just didn't get his pad over to the right post in time to cover that one up. But overall, he had a pretty solid game. And yeah, obviously the fourth goal, he wasn't even on the ice at the time. So he didn't give up four goals. And, uh, you know, that's just a tough break. What you just wish you could see what have formulated on that pass that went Aaron of Pashtuka having to race down. They obviously don't get the empty netter right there. You don't know if Menor capitalizes, but you wish you could see what those 29 seconds would have brought. I mean, it seems 4-2, two, two goal advantage, but that empty netter is all the difference. You know, it's 3-2 at that point. Does Menor tie it up? Do they get a chance to get a good shot on goal? We won't find out tonight. When you're set up like that in the offensive zone, 30 seconds to go, you just, you can't make a mistake like that. And I'm, I mean, Declan Conway's been their best player this season. It's not really been close outside of Rhoda Bush. He's obviously not with the team right now, having been called up. But, you know, obviously he's going to want that one back. And that mistake at that point in the game just really hurts. When we look back on the season in the playoffs, it'll be games like this, moments like this that, you know, may have tested you. They may be all for the better, losing some of these clutch moments, icebreakers, you know, unable to uh, capitalize on the six on four. The other empty netter we saw uh, a week or two ago and the uh, the overtime shootout losses and not scoring, but that has a possibility to make you battle ready later. Now it'll be up to the icebreakers to step up and rise to that occasion and see if they can use these learning moments um, and not fall to the pressure of them. Now we get the dashers tomorrow night. What do you expect on the Saturday night final game of the regular season between these two teams? If it wasn't another, another one of these close defensively minded games, I'd be surprised because all these team, all these two teams have really played recently throughout this season series outside of that 7-4 to four kind of fluky game here when the Icebreakers won at Menor Ice Arena and the Dashers had that brutal travel schedule. It's been really a lot of these close defensive games, these 3-2, to two, these 2-1 two to one games. So we'll have the Dashers tomorrow. That'll be a 635 puck drop. We'll join you around 625 here on YouTube.com. We hope you join us again, whether you're from Danville, Illinois, Menor, Ohio, anywhere in between or beyond. And then Monday, get ready. We get the Rumble Bees in town who are a very improving team. They're still struggling, only one win, but the Battle Creek Rumble Bees play hard each and every game. Now why don't we take one glass quick look at any finals or get scores from around the league before we end up here. The Port Huron's going to win over Battle Creek 7-2. Uh, Columbus, really impressive win tonight over Watertown 7-2. Parker Moskal had a couple of goals for the River Dragons, who are looking like a really competitive team now for that 8-15 start. Delaware and Carolina still tied at 2-2 two two late in the third period, and then Elmira going to beat Danbury tonight. They're up 5-2. I tell you, these two fourth-place teams in the East and the West, the Delaware Thunder and Columbus River Dragons, uh, don't count them out. They're both steadily improving. Uh, Columbus, you know, at 31 points, still a well ways behind uh, Port Huron and Danville, but, you know, they're improving at a strong rate. And you said you, you kind of are intrigued by that Columbus Carolina if, if the River Dragons do take the fourth spot. Yeah, and the playoffs this year in the FBHL, are, I'm really excited for them, for them just because this year, the parity in the league, it seems like it's an, at an all-time high. You know, any team can beat any other team on any given night outside of, I hate to say it, outside of Battle Creek. But those other nine teams really seems like anybody can beat anybody, and it's going to be a competitive playoffs once all these guys... Uh, I'm going to say on the record here, obviously, barring an absolute miracle, the Rumblebees will be mathematically eliminated from playoffs. But here's the thing. You know, Battle Creek could play a big part of this. Any team that lets their guard down, that could be the extra three points you took for granted that changes the seeding. You know, Battle Creek won't make the playoffs, but... You, you don't know, know that. You don't know they, that. They might. It, it's but, possible. But even if they don't make the playoffs, they're playing very hard. I give them all the credit in the world. We're very happy when they got the win. But here's the thing is uh, you take them for granted, they pick up a win, and they play hard. That could change, you know, standings are decided by three. But look, Danville and Menor last year, it came down to the very end to decide who was going to get fifth and sixth. So they granted didn't make the playoffs, but still, every game matters. You don't know which one is going to one be the one that matters. Yeah, and the Icebreakers falling down to the fourth seed with Elmira's win tonight. The Enforcers will have a little bit of a lead over the Icebreakers heading into tomorrow night. And 
right now. It looks like Elmira might be surging all the way up to second place. But Watertown's been struggling almost as much as we have. Elmira having played less games than Mentor. Mentor has actually played the most games, uh, maybe least at home, but still most overall at 29 in the East. Now Delaware ha has actually played the least, and they are slowly improving at 8 and 17. And with that three, you get three points for winning the FPHL regulation win that is, and right now Delaware's within 20 points of the Icebreakers, and that gap could get smaller if the Icebreakers continue to struggle and the Thunder keep playing as well as they're playing. Depending on how these two teams play until they meet up, and then four in a row at Delaware, that's a huge swing. You're talking about a possible what, uh, 12, 12 points there. So anything's up for grabs. I you got to come to play each night. I think we'll learn a lot about this team over the next month or so. Before they get into that stretch of Eastern Division opponents, they have, I think, 10 or 11 more games against Western Division opponents. A lot of matchups with Port Huron, a lot of games against Carolina, a couple of matchups with Columbus, some really tough teams from the East, and a Port Huron club they've, they've struggled against. So it's going to be really uh, telling the results over the next few months, next few weeks, that is. So we'll have the Dashers tomorrow, and then the Fighting Rumblebees coming in on Monday. And until then, we'll see you tomorrow. We thank you again for listening. We'll Join us tomorrow at 625, and until next time, we'll see you all later.